Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Yeah! yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, welcome to Super Agents Live. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, I am glad you did. Okay, look, today's episode, you are going to love this guy, man. These are the kind of guys that if I could have on every day, I mean, it, I, I would love it. Um, so easy to talk to, so easy to get information out of, because believe it or not, believe it or not, I don't know what my episodes sound like to you, but sometimes, man, I'm on the end of this mic struggling, going trying to drag good information out of people. <clears throat> but today's guest is a guy named Danny Griffin. Now, Danny comes on and he just drops the goods. <clears throat> and he talks about how he started in real estate and how, you know, what he was trying to do early on was he was trying to find a system. And he did. And he shares with us how he systemizes success. <clears throat> he systemized it so hard that he became the number seven agent in the world and I think it's for Keller Williams. And I, I, I didn't listen to this whole thing um, doing the editing, but uh, but I did hear that part <laughs> again. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Remax, Coldwell Banker, whatever. Number seven in the world, in the globe. Amazing. Uh, so we, we talk about, we talk about, you know, you know me, when, when I when I get these good guys, we tend to go off, uh, we go off into the weeds a little bit, <laughs> which is cool. But we talk about how he he has survived and thrived in, in any economic environment whether that's the Lehman crash or whatever. And it's stuff that you can put in place. Now, I do want to tell you, so look, here's another thing that's interesting about this guy. This guy, <clears throat> excuse me for the cough. This guy wanted a TV show. He, he was looking, to, he wanted a TV show. And guess what? He manifested it. He has a show on a &E, uh, this episode is going live on a Friday, so if you're listening to it on a Friday, um, tune in tomorrow on Saturdays, and any &E, it's called 60 Seconds to Sell. He tells us about the show. He tells us how he got the show, so stick with it. You're going to love it. Okay, hey, uh, real quick, a little housekeeping before we get to the content. Um, the hashtag for the show if you're new, if you don't know, it is unpack that idea. Un tweet that out. It's a big follow train. I'll follow you. You'll get new followers. And look, you're just going to join our awesome tribe on Twitter. Um, the second thing is, uh, so is this will be going live on July 11th, July 18th, one week from tomorrow. We are going to do the live event here in San Diego. It's 150 bucks. We're going to put 10 people in a room. And we're going to mastermind all day. If you're stuck on something, if you want to fast track your business and you're anywhere in Southern Cal, dude, you can be in Central Cal. You know, I'm only, you know, seven hours from Fresno. Hop in your car, drive to San Diego, and, uh, and let's do this thing. And the last thing, if you don't know, um, I, I want, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I could talk for hours on it. But basically, look, this whole platform is, has been, has been, I built it in a lot of ways to do one thing, and that is to put people on the radio. Now, what I know is radio is magical. It is magical. It is. I've done so many interviews that you guys have not heard with people on the radio, and it's literally, it's one of those things where you flip a switch and a whoosh, whoosh. I mean, people, people literally say, come and list my house. Come and list my house. So <clears throat> most people, believe it or not, there's one guy that, that has been doing radio uh, and he sells exclusivity, right? So if you're in the San Diego market and uh, there's a guy who does radio here, uh, dude, you're locked out. So nobody's competed with this guy and it's about time that, 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 uh, that you know, if you want on the radio, I can get you on the radio. So uh, that's it. You know, and you, you, not just, uh, you know, you have to have a team in place. You have to be able to, to, to be able to service the barrage of leads. So it's not for everybody. So that's it. Uh, if you're interested and you think you have the back end to do it, give me, give me a holler and we'll talk. All right. Hey, one last thing, one last thing I'm sad to say, but uh, um, so this episode's going out on Friday. Now, tomorrow on Friday, when you're listening to this, I'm going to be in Portland. I'm going to be at the World Domination Summit. 
conquering the world. And I will not get back until Monday. And I have a crap load of stuff to do before that. So, so guess what, man? No show on Monday. No show on Monday. And I know there's some people out there who depend on this show for their commute or whatever. And I'm sorry, man. I will make it up to you. But uh, so no show on Monday. All right. Uh, uh, you can chew me out on Twitter if you want. All right. Let's get to Danny. Today on the show, I'm super excited, man. I finally got a guy on the show that I've, I've been working for months to try to get this guy. And finally, he came on. Um, I'm thrilled to welcome Danny Griffin. Uh, DannyGriffin.com is his website of Griffin Realty Group. Hey, Danny. Oh, you bet, buddy. I'm almost embarrassed to hear that intro. That that means you were much more diligent and organized than I was. So good for you, buddy. Yeah, thank uh, you. I'm hum I'm humbled to do it. So just so you know, I am a big fan of the work you're doing out there, and uh, it's my pleasure to do this with you. Awesome. Well, listen, you have a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, take a minute. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself and and your business today. Sure. Well, as it relates to real estate, it dates back about 14 years ago where I came out of that, uh, that entrepreneurial background like you did. I'm, I'm a corporate refugee. I'm a walk out the front door guy. Um, um, hope, hopefully I thought I was about two twenty four 24 months away from going to Harvard business school when I had this epiphany, uh, piled on with a, a, a dose of panic attacks that it wasn't me and buddy, nobody had a blueprint for what it means to be an entrepreneur. And back then I hate to tell you that, uh, I'm a little bit older than you, I'm sure. Uh, uh, there was no direction, and I just walked out the front door and said, I'm going to figure this thing out, and I ended up in the real estate business flipping houses. You know, I was one of those guys up late night watching Carlton Sheets and buying the CDs, and uh, back then, I'm sure it was tapes, and uh, went out and started flipping houses on credit cards and figured it out, and that led me eventually to say, you know, I need to help people buy and sell houses. That, to me, is much more interesting, um, and I got into uh, being a real estate agent in 1999, got licensed and went over to realty executives because they left you alone. And my business plan back then was uh, literally, I joked with them, I said, why don't you just give me 2,000 business cards, a lamp, uh, and an army helmet, and I'm going to work. And if you sneeze real estate close enough together, I'm going to find you. And that was the, uh, the humble beginnings of Danny Griffin, the real estate agent. Um, flash forward, I realized I had come out of the investment banking business and the venture capital business, and I realized uh, that all of the best businesses that I had seen and analyzed on Wall Street, they had a system. So I knew it was sort of a ridiculous business plan and uh, you couldn't sell on muscle the rest of your life. And the burnout was uh, starting to happen pretty early on. So I went looking for a system and I found Craig Proctor, Toby, and uh, that was the best thing that happened to me. Flew up to Toronto to hear him speak about his success as the number one Remax agent in the entire world in 91 and 96. And this was 2001. And I was at Boston's Logan Airport only about 60 days out from when September 11th had happened. So uh, you can see how determined I was. There was about six people in the airport and um, <laughs> a, a guy with a, a machine gun and an attack uh, German shepherd and nothing was going to stop me. And I went up there, found a mentor, found a system and spent, uh, oh boy, all the way up until 2012. I ran his mastery coaching program for him. He helped me ascend to number seven in the world for realty executives, which is really, it's like talking about nothing. I feel like I don't even want to say that, but some people need to hear it. Um, it's all about the business and it's all about getting it right. And that's what he had. And uh, uh, that's really my foundation for where, where I stand today. And once again, that entrepreneurial calling came and I walked out of Craig's organization in the bottom of the real estate market for especially Cape Cod, my primary market, and decided this was the time to go out and help real estate agents. So you and I are bonded in that mission. And uh, I couldn't be thrilled to, to pick up the story from there with you. That is awesome. Well, look, I mean, there's there's a lot there. It's interesting. So, so ninety nine. Well, look, you, you have a background in investment banking. You have a background in venture mm -hmm. capital, which is interesting. So ninety nine. Uh, and by the way, so I'm forty four. So ninety nine. I was twenty nine. You? How old are you? Yep. I'm forty eight. So, so I don't have you by that. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Okay. So so ninety nine. You get into the world now. Ninety nine. That was uh, that was the start of the boom, right? The boom from you know. Correct. Um. You know. I don't know when it started, but I know in two thousand two thousand one it was going hot, and then uh, and then obviously it, it, when Lehman failed in oh eight, everything blew up. So right. you went to you found Craig Proctor because you were looking for a system. What do you mean by that? Unpack that. What what what? System? Sure. Sure. 
that's a heady question. I'll, I'll tell you what, when real estate agents get into this business, they, I think they have the perception it's a job that you're going to go to, uh, whether it's a mom and pop franchise or it's a national franchise, that's irrelevant. I think the perception is you're going to walk through the door and it's going to be like another job, but it's not, it's a business. All you did was sign up for, <clears throat> excuse me, an opportunity to run a business. So that business has an A through Z blueprint that you're looking for. And if you don't have one, well, boy, it's a, you know, it, you, you're going to be like the national average. I mean, what's the true number? True sales in a year. They call it now the typical agent at seven. That's a train wreck. That puts you below the poverty line. So I think the reason for that, Toby, is as simple as people don't treat it as a business from the minute they get in. In other words, you need a marketing plan. You need a strategic marketing plan. You need a strategic follow-up plan. And then you need a strategic measurement plan. Those are the three pillars for a successful business, probably anywhere, but especially in this industry. He had that. And I was able to look at it. Look, I wasn't looking to reinvent the wheel. I understood that nothing's new under the sun. Go find somebody who's figured it out. Sure, you can put a little bit of your own polish on it, but find somebody who has it right and copy them. And that's what I did. I'll tell you, so, you know, this, a lot of people listen to this show and they think it's about real estate, but in reality, this show is about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. And I, and that's one of the things that I think that I see a lot of people get wrong. I mean, you're you're saying the same thing, right? They, they, they think that they, they get their license and they're like, I'm going to sell a house and they, and they, they do, they treat like a job instead of treating it like a business, developing a budget. Um, develop a plan and then and then going out and execute for for people if you know people are going to listen to this show Danny and they're going to go hey I want to you know Danny became the number seven agent in the world I want to I want to I want to uh, model after him you, talk to us a little bit about you know what does that marketing plan look like that strategic you know how sure. do people go about doing that well, you, you, you know, I think that's a great question, but it's a loaded question, too. I'm going to be very cautious in the way I answer it. Okay. You were absolutely right about the timing. In 1999, it was the cusp of the first disaster that I experienced as a young guy coming out of college. I mean, and I was in college in 87 when the market tanked, and shortly thereafter, the real estate market collapsed. Um, and so by the time 1999 came, I think people think, Things recover very quickly. Well, they don't. In 1999, the phone was still buzzing for BPOs, broker price opinions for a product that was going to end up being owned by a bank and then auctioned off. So that was still happening. I didn't quite understand it because I was coming in, and luckily enough, it was just turning right there, Toby. So I had the wind at my sails, and I didn't even know it. So I was able to go in with a very mediocre beginning business plan and catch that wind. So when people hear, oh, Danny Griffin, he came out of nowhere and he went there and he, uh, he, he became the number seven guy. Well, I became the number seven guy with a little bit of luck, too, yep. because time is everything. I'd rather tell you that right now I'm in the pit. I'm in that, that proverbial uh, warrior pit with the, the everyday agent trying to figure out how to get through the Cape Cod recession. We cover Boston, too, and that's a whole different animal. But the Cape Cod secondary market is where we get through this. So regardless of whether you are just trying to make a living or become a superstar at some national organization, you have to have the same system that deals with all of those outside forces that would try to knock you off the path. So that's how I set it up. But I looked at it. Um, and said, okay, if you're going to restructure the business plan and then condense it down and share it with your audience, Toby, okay? Everybody listening should think that if Henry Ford, I said, you know, who can we go out there for a mentor and get? Let's go get the best. Well, let's go find somebody who's passed on, Henry Ford. Let's bring them into real estate agency and let's let them take a look at how our business runs. What would he do? Well, he'd look at it like an assembly line. And he'd think, well, I guess the first department is marketing. The second department is database segmentation. The third is phone and email follow-up. The next is presentation to convince them to do business with you. The next is sales in the field to actually sell the house. And the final is closing. 
and you're going to go through every single one of those assembly line stages, no matter who you are as a real estate agent, no matter where you are. And then you're going to repeat and hopefully refine that process over and over and over again so that your business begins to improve and, more importantly, evolve like Henry's assembly line did. Go Google a picture of Henry's original assembly line with a bunch of people with rubber mallets banging tires on, and now go look at it with machine tools doing that job, which then elevated the people to software engineering. And that's what evolution looks like, and it needs to happen in our business. And and why hasn't it? I mean, look, one of the other reasons why I started this show, Danny, is because, you know, as I, you know, look, I, I want to back up for a second. So you said something very, very interesting and real. And you said timing is everything. My career, and we're not going to get on to me, but, you know, I've, I've done six different companies and it's all been based on, on a window of opportunity that I saw out there, right? It was the time to do right. that. And then that window shut in terms of timing. Um, what do you think about about the current, you know, right now it's uh, 2014, June 2014, just in case somebody's listening to this five years in the future. Um, you sure. know, what do you what do you think about the market today? Right. So it's it's it's, uh, you know, people say, you know, these these booms, right. We're in a boom. These booms happen and they last seven to ten years. Right. What do you think? Yeah, well, 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 I would tell you that if history repeats itself, as it always does in business, you see these cycles. Now, throw in the evolution. We don't just come back to the same real estate in industry right now, Toby. I mean, the evolution that's happening at this level. Why do you think I know you? I, I know Pat Flynn. I know Entrepreneur on Fire. You know, all you guys who are leading the way in, in a, uh, a medium that's changing. I mean, that's incredible. So you have to deal with that. So I would tell you that slowly but surely, and as a real estate agent coach, I see this across the country. Canada, for example, they don't even know what recession means. They've been rolling along. Whereas if you talk to somebody in Cape Cod like me, I'm saying, oh my gosh, we're still scraping deals together here and we have to extract the tooth just to get it done. <laughs> so there can be that variance. But I would say, that we're coming out of it in the United States where it hurt. But we don't come out of it quickly because what gets damaged and everybody in the industry underestimates is consumer confidence. They are ultimately the boss. They're the ones telling you whether they're going to do something or not. So, Toby, whether you and I help lead a revolution of change is irrelevant in the face of lack of consumer confidence. If the consumer looks at you and I and says, nah, I'll give you a collective shrug as far as my motivation is concerned because I got so beaten up financially in a global way that I'm just not quite ready to buy that second house. I'm not quite ready to move up to the next level. So what I'm seeing is consumer confidence slowly coming back to life, but everybody being very cautious. So we're coming out of it, but not overnight. Got it. Yeah, and look, I would agree with that, and 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 you know, I don't want to get too off the <clears throat> off our main message here, but so let me ask you this: so everybody thought, right? So uh, so again, after Lehman failed in 08, right? The the world was a disaster, right? Uh, I mean, uh, right. housing completely melted, unemployment. You know, we, we saw the lowest levels in a long, long time. <clears throat> everybody thought for housing to come back. Un, you know, it, it, the employment issue would have to get solved, right? Unemployment would have to get sure. back up to, you know, the the six percent unemployment rate or 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 less. How today do you think are we? You know, it, I'm in San Diego. Unemployment hasn't yeah. changed, you know, and if sure. the numbers have changed, it's really like sort of low end, you know, uh, McDonald's, Walmart workers are are getting at it, but not not white collar workers. How how is housing maybe? And th if this is not your expertise. Just oh, no, I'm all over this. I'm chopping at the bit. All right, all right. <laughs> so, you, on this one. so yeah. yeah. So how did how is housing coming back without unemployment really changing? Uh, excellent question. Because the consumer confidence at the entry level, of look, the masses are the most important part of an economic structure. Okay, so economics 101. If you take the worker of the day, and you mentioned some big companies that employ the blue collar worker, they are everything to the support system. If they don't feel good about spending money at Walmart, at McDonald's, wherever it is that that, that structure has to support the economy, why would you, if you were a white collar, a luxury buyer, why would you do anything? 
because you don't see that support at the foundation of the economy. That's what frightens everything. When average Joe and Jane stops spending, goes to the sidelines, and does nothing, uh, they might still be employed. It's a consumer confidence issue. I think statistics economically are manipulated in a big way yeah. to get us to do certain things as the masses. But when we decide, in spite of those indicators, there's your proof. And that's what you're telling me in San Diego. You say, hey, this hasn't changed, but all of a sudden the market's really heating up, especially at entry level. Those first time home buyers are coming into the market and they're saying, yeah, well, whatever. We got to live our life. We've been out of school for four years. We couldn't get a job. Now we have one. Now we want to buy a house. What's that? got to do with unemployment. We're employed. We're going to play. And as they begin to play, that move up buyer says, well, gee, now I finally have something to buy mine. I can move up and I'm maybe a little bit more white collar per se. And I'm not saying this in a derogatory way. That's just social structure. Then I think when somebody gets that extra bonus because that whole global economy starts to move again, Wall Street, 16,000 or whatever it just hit. Well, guess what's going to follow that? cash bonuses. And guess what they're going to spend it on? Luxury items. Right. So I always think it starts from the bottom up. And that's, you, you're waiting for that, that, that part of the structure to take hold. And it's taking hold. Got it. Interesting. You're a smart guy, Danny. Um, so, so, so we've been talking about consumer confidence on a macro level. On a, on a micro level, Mm -hmm. How how do you manage it? And and really, what I'm getting at here is, if I go to uh, DannyGriffin.com, and I was just on there, and I, I got off there. Yeah. Um, so you know, you you uh, you have uh, you're one of the few, and I I I think you d listen. Do you do radio? Yeah, well, listen to this. I, I, I do a little radio. I'm cringe when you say DannyGriffin.com. Because of guys like you, I've been inspired to do a complete makeover of both brands. We are under construction where DannyGriffin.com is more, I guess that's me these days, right? And, and, and I'm in a lot of places. Uh, I'm a real estate agent coach. I'm a real estate brokerage, and I'm a mindset guy who loves to help with that stuff. Um, now I add to the re resume TV show host. I don't know if I talked to you about no. this. but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah buddy. Well, we, we just we just aired our first episode of uh, 60 Seconds to Sell on A and A A uh, and E this past Saturday at noon. So uh, I've got sort of an eclectic, weird resume these days, and it's all about this innovation of how real estate gets sold. But my point is, I have had to evolve myself so much. My websites have fallen behind. And in this day and age, I study guys like you, Flynn, uh, Internet Business uh, you know, Mastery, Entrepreneur on Fire. I study you all to try to find out where the trend is in websites and presentation. So you're going to see us very quickly evolve all of that so that it's very simple, very clear where we're at. These days, we're even moving away. That's a canned um, system. DannyGriffin.com goes to Griffin Realty Homes, which is owned by Success Website. That's canned and done for you. I've actually evolved over to GriffinHomeSearch.com temporarily, which is market leader, now truly a site, um, for lead capture. Um, and we're building a WordPress-based site because we want more control over how all of this gets out there. So in the Griffin Realty Group world, we have multiple fronts that are we're trying to condense as fast as we can and simplify. Uh, the RealtyClassroom.com is getting a, a makeover. That's the coaching site. And the magnetic mind system is just a passion. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing in 2008, but I knew the, the blogging world was the way to get my, uh, my helpful message out there. I've never monetized a thing off that site, and uh, that's under construction too. So, so thanks to you guys like you. You helped me straighten out my act. Man, you do have a lot going on. <clears throat> and by the way, uh, you mentioned uh, a few times you mentioned uh, Entrepreneur on Fire with John Lee Dumas, and um, I was just on his show, so he interviewed me um, you had a great interview. Oh, that you heard it. Oh, that's interview. cool. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. And what I loved about it, and I want to give you a pitch to your own audience, that was as real um, as it gets. To be transparent about your personal history, which you and I share, by the way, um, dude, that's why you are who you are. The ability to lay yourself bare to an audience. Uh, well, I don't even know you that well yet. I'm proud of you for being like that. <laughs> that was just, uh, Thank you, uh, and it's why, it's why you got back uh, to the top of my radar. Not, I'm not saying that with hubris. I'm humbled to be here, but uh, you're the real deal, and you, people man. should listen to you more. Thank you. Hey, so going back to um, going back to uh, you know uh, consumer confidence on a on a micro level, you do a couple different things, right? So you have uh, I won't mention that other website because you have multiple fronts, but you know you have this uh, l love it or leave it kind of guarantee. You make two guarantees: <clears throat> I'll buy your house, 
Yeah. Um, if I can't sell it. And two, if you, if you, if I sell you one and you don't like it, I'll, or how does that go? <clears throat> you, you'll sell it yeah, for we're, free. We're, we're, yeah. Well, let's talk about the evolution of, of big, bold, unique selling propositions and what I've learned. Let me, let me be transparent about my learning in front of your audience. I was taught that stuff out of the Craig Proctor world, which comes directly out of Dan Kennedy's world. And I'm sure you know, Dan and the rest of the information marketing world, um, <clears throat> the desire to make a big, bold statement can sometimes get carried away um, and, and become not universal. And so buy your house or I'll, uh, you know, buy this house for me and I'll buy yours is a move-up program. What it basically says is, look, if buy one of my listings and if you're caught with another house, I'll come in and give you an offer. The basic parameter is you have to come directly to me and buy it so that I have commissions on both ends. So if I screw something up, I've got enough spread and I can lose all the commission money, okay? Yeah. That's this program laid bare so people don't get delusional uh, uh, that it's some kind of Rockefeller-like system. It's very logical, but it's limited, and it bothered me. So this is how the TV show comes about. Yeah. I was looking for a big, bold statement to, to offer to everybody. I'm like you, man. I just want to tell the truth, and I want it to apply to everybody. So I looked around, and when the market tanked, I became a pricing it right expert in the coaching world. I started to look at what Zillow was doing, and I was totally intrigued. I wasn't one of these guys that oh, they're ruining the business. Now I said, look, at these guys are on the bleeding edge, man. They're doing something right. They're taking public mathematics, and they're making a guesstimate. Pretty cool. Maybe real estate agents should grasp on that, take it further, walk into the house, make a conditional adjustment, and we'll have real pricing it right methods. But what happens when a bottom falls out of a market? And even though you think you're a pricing right expert, you can't find where that slippery slope is going. Why not catch it from the bottom up? All I had to do was look around and look at all these banks that were using auction companies, and they were creating a market on the corner. Okay, sure, it's about distressed sales. It's an absolute auction. There's a lot of uh, you know, problematic part with that if you're trying to sell retail. But why not just use an auction that's non-binding? Why not just take price off the table for a week and say, look, we think we've got a pretty good house in here. Why don't all you buyers that are interested in that area, that size house, come and see it. And then what we'll do is we'll go round robin on the phone until we establish market value. If it's not enough for the seller, seller thinks it's worth more, we'll continue the discussion. If it doesn't come together, then well, guess what? Seller wasn't quite ready to accept true market value because buyer moved on. So we started doing that at the beginning of the recession, and I'm telling you, Toby, two weeks out from Christmas, I took a house, a little easy one, five brothers had inherited 200000 we cut the price in half, we held all the showings for a couple hours to Saturday, 35 people through the house in a recession with snow on the ground on Cape Cod. I was hooked. I mean, I was absolutely hooked. I'm, my gosh, the stock market come to life in the real estate business. Here it is. And worlds collided. And since then, I've done it 99 times. It attracted a local production company out of Boston. A&E uh, got all excited, gave us a couple hundred thousand to film a pilot program, and then picked up uh, six episodes uh, that are airing currently as we're doing this interview uh, on their channel, A&E, and also their rebranded biography channel, FYI. Because it's simple, it's straightforward, and we cure the problem of this a ridiculous amount of expired listings that are all based on the wrong price for the wrong time. Interesting, man. So, so t tell me. I mean, I, I get it, but but but. Uh, and by the way, do you know a guy? Uh, do you know of a guy named Derek Halpern? He's he's in my uh, yes yeah you, yeah you, I listen to I listen to all you guys yeah so you and Derek man you and Derek have you guys sound I mean you have that same power in your voice you sound the same but anyhow so so tell us again so walk through that process it's super interesting and it, walk through that process again so sure, I'm I'm sure. gonna sell my house what do you do <clears throat> yeah. what's mechanically what okay do you do? let me set this up properly if I say to you Toby look at before I even come over to your house. On a scale of 1 to 10, how motivated are you to sell? Now, if you don't give me an answer between 9 and 10, I'm going to ask you why. I'm not just going to jump off my desk and come down there because if you are not properly motivated to sell your house, I don't care what technique the agent uses. You're doomed for some sort of failure or, or too much challenge. They have to be mentally ready because this is the biggest emotional transaction that most people make in a lifetime, let alone financial. So we need them to be in the proper mindset, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this is probably a Halpert subject, right? So when you start to look at that, if they're 9 to 10, 
we can come over and have a clear discussion about methodology. Now we say, look, the market's challenging. And even if it's not, even if it's white hot, I'm going to make the case for this methodology. Watch what happens. Okay. I'm going to say, Toby, look, I'm going to come over and, and let's pretend I'm there now. Toby, here are the mathematics that tell me what's going on. What I do, and it's a little tricky in California. There's my, there's my disclaimer and my caveat. What I learned by studying Zillow, they have to be taking something that's public information. I figured, why not the assessed value? They're grabbing the assessed value. And everybody says, oh, the assessed value. That has nothing to do with market value. Well, you're right, but you're also wrong. And if you don't have a, a background in Wall Street like I do, you don't understand what lagging indicators are and how valuable they are to predicting future or current market value. You can measure against the lagging indicator like the assessed value. In other words, the assessed value is, a, is lagging the true market value all the time. So when you see a market pick, typically, you will see a, a, an assessed value be too high. It's above what it will actually sell for. And all the sellers say, well, come on, my assessed value is 250000 You're telling me it's only worth one ninety nine. Yes, it's behind current market value. As the market improves, you will see it lag low. And the buyer will now use it and say, well, why am I paying 250 when the assessed value says 199 If you just simply know it's a lagging indicator, that's all you have to say. It's not market value. But don't throw it out. Don't throw that baby out with the bathwater. Take it and measure against it. So now, Toby, I come over to your house. You tell me on the phone. I say, Toby, what do you think your house is worth? Well, aren't you coming over to tell me that, Danny? <laughs> yes, I understand that, Toby. But you tell me what your perception of value is because I'd love to bring some supporting documentation. So now I know when I say that, evidence is evidence. I'm not going to make it up. It comes out of MLS, our marketplace. So now I take the five comparables, six comparables that are most like Toby's house. He's got a ranch, three bedrooms, two baths. I'm going to pull that. In Cape Cod, it's a little bit tricky. I might have to go further out and look at that particular product versus his neighborhood. But I'm going to come in with five or six, and I'm going to take their sold prices, and I'm going to divide them by that assessed value. And guess what I have? A trading range. The guy down the street that was a short sale just sold at 95% of his assessed value. The guy that has all new windows and new roof, he sold at 125%. Now, I walk through Toby's door, and Toby has all new windows, new roof, and then some. Awesome. Toby, guess what? You're probably going to trade at the high end of this range, and this technical analysis, all math, tells me you could be 125% of your assessed value. I have a pretty darn close estimate of what Toby's going to sell for. And it is uncanny how accurate this can be when you really start to get good at this. But what if the market is really acting wild? And it's, the, like I said, the bottom's falling out. And I price it, and I say, Toby, look at Look at all these houses that sold. When they were finally priced right, they only gave up 3%. So 125% of your assessed value is 250 If we tack on much more than 3%, that's 7500 bucks. Maybe I could cheat at ten grand. But if I go too much further than that, guess what I just did to you? I took you right out of the range of reality for today. Whereas most agents will say, guy will say, oh, you think it's 250 Can we plus it up to 275 Yeah, no problem. Dead on arrival, game over. Because the math tells you that's a big mistake. Now enter the other piece of pricing it right. You come in and say, Toby, we're going to price it at two fifty nine nine. If we can hear tumbleweeds rolling down the street in the first couple of weeks, it's not my marketing. Don't beat me up. We priced it incorrectly because the wrong price trumps the best marketing every single day. But what I'll do to trump any other kind of marketing is I will cut the price in half and open up a non-binding round robin for one week only. We'll cut the price on Tuesday. We'll hold all showings till one day for two hours. We'll get everybody in. They'll all sign in. Anybody interested in doing round robin on the phone, we'll put their name down. We'll call them, and we'll move it from the bottom up, and we will use this very same mathematical computation to make the case that this is where you belong. So if they come in low, We'll say, hey, listen, we appreciate that you were the high bidder. Unfortunately, it's not enough for Toby to move on. But as a token of our appreciation, we'd like to counter you personally and continue the discussion. Toby, it's been happening since the Roman Empire was gotten rid of after it collapsed just like this. Go Google round robin bidding and read it for yourself, right? Yeah. You have to create a market 
for an asset anytime, anywhere, regardless of the circumstances, including the uh, economy. So I hate to talk at you that long, but you know, you asked for an explanation. No, and I don't want to no, leave no, that these was, people like dumbfounded. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, it was absolutely fascinating. So, um, so yeah, I, I agree that. Um, so you need to be motivated. You need to be nine out of ten motivated. You can come in with this technical analysis and and come up with an uncanny number, but. But the only reason, I mean, correct me where I'm wrong, Danny, but the only reason sure. you even give them a number and do that math is to, is, is, to, is to start to sort of manage their mindset, right? You, you want to get them in the right place of, hey, listen, here's the range, 95 to 125. You know, you might be at the upper limit in, in terms of the, the one example. Let you me ask it. you this. <clears throat> yeah. What if this gets out of the bag, man? Well, I mean, I mean so real estate <clears> – <throat> Has you know uh, so look technology has disintermediated travel agents uh, you know there's lots of age uh, uh, lots of uh, jobs that technology has disintermediated the the person um, in your example right uh, um, the Ford example you know uh, uh, machines have disintermediated the the worker on the line yeah. would this would this concept could this possibly disintermediate you if if meaning that you know if I'm a if I'm a homeowner. And I'm, you know, and I'm a relatively smart guy, you know, and I, I can, I can do the analysis myself, you know, come up with a number and yep. I don't need an agent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting here and my mind is spinning. <laughs> um, so, so, so be it brother. Um, and, and that's coming from a one entrepreneur to the next. I can reinvent myself in a nanosecond and I'm fearless in that. Um, I would rather die by my own sword in the field than ever be enslaved by any other structure or anything. That's me. But now let me go help all of my fellow real estate agents tuning into this. Okay. Don't duck your head in the sand. Change comes to us. Craig Proctor taught me so many great things, and then I watched a lot of them become obsolete overnight. Let me give you an example. When you used to have the old-fashioned squeeze page that said, here, enter your name and your criteria here, and we will begin to send you free lists of homes. And then this little old startup company called Realtor.com in 1996 made a little old deal with the National Association of Realtors. And we took what was proprietary to our industry forever and we turned it over for free to the public. Now, not everybody knew what was happening in 1996. The former CEO, Alan Dalton, another fellow Boston kid, um, he and I became very friendly. And the more I picked his brain, the more I understood what had happened. Next thing, this term IDX is out there. And, and all of a sudden, the consumer, which I will repeat, is the boss for change. The consumer decides they want something en masse. You better get out of the way. All salmon will be run right back down the stream. You got to roll with the tide. You can't swim up when mega change is happening. So that was the first mega change. Every agent, that's why I cringe when I look at that success website that's still very much based on squeeze pages. I went to the market leader site because it gave away the best stuff we had as real estate agents for free, the best, and that was instant access to homes for sale. So we are already irrelevant as real estate agents in a modern context if we don't embrace that. Now, what it did was it, make, it made everybody realize, holy mackerel, now we better be the best concierge desk, like a hotel, the Ritz, or whatever brand you can think of that offers the best concierge service, and we have to give people information, preview, send pictures, do whatever it takes just to win the date. Can I meet with you to show you a few homes because I'm the one that's followed up with you for 12 months, 18 months, 24 months just to win the date. That's my example. So now the pressure on the listing, okay? Everybody walks into a door and the consumer saying, well, what do you really do for me? If I pop this online, don't I have as good of a chance from a marketing standpoint as I do with you? But I have glossy brochures. <laughs> but I have this. But I have that. And it's all shiny. And, and, but I've sold a thousand homes. Who cares? The context. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this. The context. What's the context of today? I'm just being a realist in today's context. They have the information. 
I'm trying to create the market and position myself as a great negotiator making the case for you. And I'm not delusional. I'm not going to get you another 10% above what market value says you are within 2 or 3%, but I am the guy that's going to get them here. I am the guy that's going to make you stand out, and I am the guy that's most definitely going to negotiate you a couple more points. And that's not a small amount of money. On 500,000, that's 10 grand, 15 grand. On 200, it's 4 grand, 6 grand. That's a lot of money. Throw that down on cash on the table, and I say, Toby, that's going to feed your family and mine. We're going to go, right? Yeah, for so sure. So you got to take this. You got to find in that micro moment where the truth is. And I know here to answer one of the earlier questions that we didn't come back to, why do people not do this stuff when it's right there for the taking? Right. Because like Edison said, our opportunity is often overlooked because it comes dressed in overalls. It looks like work. This is work. You actually have to work a lot to figure this out. I work seven days a week because you know why? When there's white space, that's what I gravitate towards. You know, I like you and I, and I like Dumas because you guys were talking about getting up at four o'clock in the morning. And you know what you made me feel? Guilty because I get up at six. You got me beat by two, right? And I have five kids and two dogs. You think there's enough noise in the house to get up at four. And that's when you have to get up. But, uh, you know, all kidding aside, um, it takes work, man. This is just, this isn't magic. You know, when people say, oh, you got a TV show, you're so lucky, you're an overnight success. Really? I'm a success over a lot of nights. You want to sit down and listen to my whole story? I'll tell you. And it started with panic attacks while I was trying to figure out why I didn't want to go to Harvard Business School after spending a good chunk of time getting into the right companies to do it, right? And there was no interwebs to go look for panic attacks. So I had to figure it out by reading books at Barnes and Noble until I finally realized, hey, stupid, stop pounding the square into the round hole. You are what you are and live that way. And then all of a sudden, all you guys started cropping up on podcasts. I said, hey, here they are, entrepreneurs. How funny, man. Um, there's so much there, Danny. So in terms of how, okay. So I mean, look, everybody's going to look at your life, right? You, you, you are a, a, a super smart guy, number one. Number two, you're super successful. And now you're turning into a celebrity, right? You have this show. Tell me again, how did that show come up? They, 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 the, sure. the network just saw what you were doing? Yeah, let me, pr let me prove this point to you. Let me, okay. let me give you evidence of my own life as a story. Um, in 1984, if you Google it, Belmont Hill School in Belmont, Massachusetts, okay, um, I was the president of the drama club. 1984, this is 2014, okay? From that day forward, I never stopped thinking about TV, ever, ever. I don't know if there's much of a day that went by that I wasn't intrigued by the medium. Um, uh, it didn't interest me. I just didn't know how I was going to get there, but I figured I should keep thinking about it because it was a passion of mine. Now, the other part of that is I was also very passionate about business. I, I, I think I came out of the womb an entrepreneur and didn't know, but my father was an entrepreneur. Vaynerchuk will love this. I grew up in the, you know, the wine and spirits business. That's what I did. Um, I didn't quite have the success that they had, but, but I took a store when I first left venture capital from, um, you know, oh boy, we were doing a million to two and a half million. Um, and, and we started with 12 bottles of wine and we ended up with uh, a delivery business, right? No internet back then either. Otherwise I might've been Gary's story. Yeah. So those things combine and you just keep working at them because you love them. And you think about them. I love YouTube. You'll see that my website, I sort of missed the boat on the podcasting side. I was doing it with audacity and recording my blog um, with audacity, but I didn't hit, it didn't hit me because this love of the medium of YouTube was there. Then I realized I had no strategy for any of it, so I shut it down. But I just kept talking to people in TV. My sister went to Boston College with a girl who lived in the TV world. And she'd been in it. And I just kept chipping away every time I saw her. When are you going to do a real real estate show? I'm watching these shows that, you know, these flip shows that miraculously everybody's making a ton of money right. without spending any money. It doesn't make sense to me, okay? Yeah. So I get it. That's TV. But let's do one that actually helps sellers or buyers. Let's show them something. So I kept pestering her. Five years later, she calls up and says, look, we don't have a show or anything for you yet, but we're doing another show. 
and they're remodeling kitchens, and they had this funky thing for HGTV. It was called Spontaneous Construction. They brought out on the flash mod, they tore out my kitchen, they put a new one in, and being the entrepreneurial opportunist that I am, I put one of the producers in a headlock, and I said, you're not getting away. Come outside, I need to talk to you. And I just started peppering her with all of the things I did. And as soon as I mentioned the quick sale, the round robin, she said, ooh, there's your show. You can build a show around that. Well, needless to say, she goes back and tells the production company in Boston, they panic. They have to walk up the idea with me. They film what's called a sizzle reel for about two and a half minutes and to, so you all get a feeling for TV. It's no different from what you, all you guys do with your blogging and your podcasting. It's content. All these big networks need content. So the production company structure, all of those guys are the hunter-gatherers of ideas. So they shot a two-and-a-half-minute sizzle reel. They're, it's called Powderhouse Productions, by the way, out of some of them to give them their pitch. They cut this really cool two-and-a-half-minute sizzle reel. They take it down to New York and all these pitch fests, and they pitch it. Well, HGTV circled around it, but a and &E stepped up. And they said, here, here's X number of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Go shoot a pilot program so we can find the concept. Well, before that was even done, they got excited and gave us an order for six episodes. So this winter, um, this is how I found all you guys. Two and a half hours to this site. Two and a half hours to that site, back and forth, listening to podcasts and learning, learning, learning. We went out and filmed these, and uh, we just aired our first episode this past Saturday at noon on A&E. Tonight, 10, a, uh, 10 p.m., and I don't know if this will air in time, but 10 p.m. on the FYI channel, which is a, uh, an entrepreneurial rebranding of the biography channel now that A&E owns it. So there you have it. I love it. And look, and I'll tell you this, man. I love I, – I love – uh, TV as well, and I just auditioned for an A and E show. Um, that cool. is, uh, uh, I'm reading the the the. Uh, it's a pilot they were shooting. It's called Realty Ref, uh, and, and so it's. I'm reading. The, I'm looking at the email from the from the casting agent. So it's A and E's new channel launching in July, formerly the Bio Channel. So anyhow, you got it. F F Y I. That's the one for your. And actually, what's cool, you like this. I was just reading the description of it. I thought it was for your information. They actually sort of hint at for your innovation too which I love. And I, I said, oh, man, this is right up the alley of the trend of all this stuff that uh, is going on online. Interesting, man. Um, I, well, look, you, you only did six. I hope that I hope that you get more than that, man. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, I, I know all these, you know, all these shows these days. And again, we're way off topic, but all these shows these days are very truncated, right? You, you have, you know, Breaking Bad was always, you know, eight episodes instead of, you know, if you go back to when we were growing up, MASH, right? It's like it never ended, right? There was no season. It was just yeah. not a show every week. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, here's how it goes, just so you know. Yeah. They'll give you a smaller order in the beginning. Like even Mark Wahlberg's, um, Wahlbergers, they got a small order in the beginning for Manny. Same thing. And, and Mark actually had two or three shows up there, and a couple of them didn't pan out. A Powerhouse Productions has a whole bunch that don't pan out. So the risk to the network is that they buy a chunk and then it's all math. It's crazy. Um, they, the network has a wizard that sits in a room and he determines at what time you should be on. And then they track all the, you know, the, the viewings and then the Nielsen rating box stuff comes in. It's all math. Yeah. And you either have it so that they can sell advertising or not. So look, the structure is no different uh, from, from your, your, uh, your blog model. It's no different. It's the same thing. So, you know, you either get the traffic and advertisers come and you sell your own product and they come or not. So, you know, they, they've already risked, oh, you know, uh, well, I don't want to mention the money because that's their business, but it's a lot of money they yeah. risked already. Yeah. Well, look, so let me ask you this. It, it, and, and I want, so you love TV, you loved business. Um, and, and funny enough, right. Your, the, you, your TV show is about your business, but, but did you, I want, and this is really kind of getting back to mindset. D do you think there was sort of this manifestation on your part? Do you think you just, you know, the, the, you know, Napoleon Hill, do you think you just envisioned it so hard from, from, you know, to when, when you were a kid being 14 years old <clears throat> that it, it, it came true? Oh, buddy. I, uh, my passion is the mindset magnetic mind system dot com started as free thinking tools dot com um, when I had a crisis the most important thing that I want to share with your audience and audiences the rest of my life it was a very lonely place 
when you are struggling and you don't really know where the answers are, um, this is where I get very serious about my passion to help other people. Um, I had to manifest, you know, getting up from the ground and, and moving up that ladder. And, and uh, you, here's the formula. You have to know what you love. By the way, my passion are my, my children. I left Boston so that I wouldn't be distracted by money and flash and all that stuff. And I'm sitting here staring at Hyannis Port Harbor while I'm doing this. I chose lifestyle and family over everything else in a priority order. I teach my kids to this very moment. If you could do one thing the rest of your life, what would it be? And the reason for that question, you must be connected to what your God-given ability is and what you really, really want to do. Because if you connect to that in your low moments, it is the thing that will pull you up by your own proverbial bootstraps. It is the thing that will help you self-motivate out of that moment. And I am a huge believer in the systematic approach that Napoleon Hill discovered because he did the same thing that I love to talk about. He studied success. And when you study success, you find failure and you find the overcoming of the failure and what were the techniques. I will, and I heard your interview, um, I love that you referenced the book. I'll also add to that book a book that I think speaks to the manifestation how to. See, a lot of people say go to Napoleon Hill and study this this, uh, I guess, this gathering of information. But then it begs for, yeah, but how do I do it? Well, there's a guy by the name of Maxwell Maltz, M-A-L-T-Z. Um, he was a plastic surgeon that, that was affected by Napoleon Hill's work. And he wrote a book with a weird name called Psycho-Cybernetics. It means mind systems. That book affected my mentor's mentor. Dan Kennedy is my mentor's mentor, Proctor's teacher, um, when it comes to a lot of what Proctor learned. Dan Kennedy was so moved by this book that he bought the rights to it, edited it, and updated it, and it's now called The New Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz, edited by Dan Kennedy. My highest recommendation, why? Maltz really proliferated the term self-image. And what he talked about is that we are like a guided missile. A guided missile needs a very clear spot to land because when you launch it and it starts to move towards that very specific spot, it gets blown off course by a whole bunch of factors. The wind, the rain, the, wind, the, the velocity, all these things affect it atmospherically to prevent it from getting there. And what the computer does is it makes small adjustments to stay on that very clear, specific target. Our brain is the most powerful guided missile mechanism. Maltz calls it the, 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 um, the psycho mechanism uh, inside you, uh, and really the, uh, the servo mechanism. I'm sorry, I misspoke. The servo mechanism, and I like that word. It's the, it's the thing that serves you to reach that goal. And the clearer that target is, the easier it is for that servo mechanism to readjust. And instead of sounding corny, like I think sometimes the law of attraction makes it too corny. Oh, you know, I pulled up and I needed a parking space and there it was. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, that waters it down. That waters down something that's brilliantly powerful about your mind. Give it a clear target that you would absolutely love to, to land on. You would walk over broken glass. You would go through a brick wall to get to. That's your love. That's your passion. Make it clear. And that servo mechanism, your mind system, it is amazing what it will manifest. It manifested the lady, the girl, the gal who was working in TV, who happened to be my sister's friend, to help that dream come true. I could go on and on and on about examples. I own two commercial buildings. I drove by them every day and said, I want to own that building. I will own that building. I had no idea how I was going to do it, and I own both of them. So when you really, 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 really want something, program your circle, uh, your servo mechanism, and it'll get there. Go listen to the audio book, The New Psycho-Cybernetics in your car over and over and over like I do. Uh, oh, man, you'll have the how-to. Got it. And look, and uh, for everybody, I, I, I have not read that book. I'm going to buy it today. And for everybody, if you want a free copy, just use our link. 
audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. And again, I'm going to get it today. Um, and we're going to start wrapping this up, Danny, because I know, I know you're a busy sure. guy and I've had you on here. But, but real quick, I mean, because you're such a mindset guy, is there any – and if you can do it sort of briefly, what, sure. what is your pregame ritual? What do you do in the morning to, to kind of center yourself to, to go out and, and attack the day? Yeah, it's easy. I cut out all the fat. Um, and I really mean that. There's, there's just a few things that are critical to me. I have to work out. Um, it, it's critical to me. I have to be physically fit uh, my entire life. I don't care how old I am. I'll do something to stay physically fit. So the first thing that I do is get up, walk the dogs, got a couple Maltese, uh, you know, attack dogs, all four pounds each of them. We go out, get, a, get our head clear a little bit. We have a little conversation, and uh, we come back in, get ready for the gym, and um, I'm at the gym. And uh, I, I, another system, systems are important to me so that I don't make excuses for time. The Body for Life program is something I started. So you can find me in the gym doing a cardio or a weightlifting uh, rotation. And I'm just in and out of there. It's 45 minutes. That's all it takes. And I come back. Um, I, I love to have the freedom to drive my kids to school because I, I, I love them if they want that. And if not, I'm just there to help my wife on deck with all five of them. And um, then I'm, I'm right at it. And from there, uh, I, I I am very regimented in going to my laptop, opening it up, and uh, scheduling myself so there's no white space. Uh, white space is poison to me. Uh, book yourself solid. You said it on that call. We so underestimate what we're capable of, right? And, and so we leave this white space, and it devours us. So I don't leave that. And I really don't have a lot of time for anything that's not critically important to me. Um, and that's, uh, you know, really these days, it's my passion to coach um, real estate agents and my passion to help buyers and sellers, um, my family and my workout. That's it, man. Simplify. God. Get rid of the noise, dude. I will tell you what, man. You know, I, I think whoever if, if the people who are, are fortunate enough to be able to work with you, you know, whether that's whether that's the people that you coach, whether that's you know people on your team, you know, uh, even your kids, man. I mean, you know, look, there is no, and I and I wish you, I think I wish you were in closer to me. I mean, I would, I'd be your new best friend. I'd be t tagging <laughs> along with you everywhere you go, <laughs> because you know, there's no, there, there, look. Socrates, right? I forget the thing, but uh, Plato, uh, um, so um, Plato, Socrates, and who's the other? Aristotle. You know, you know, right. teacher, student, teacher, student, right? So, so right. You, you know, when you surround yourselves with with great minds, um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna end up a better person. So, man. Danny, thank you so much for coming on this show and, and, and spending some time with me and my audience. That really means a lot to me. Where can people find you? I know you have a bunch of, of, of storefronts or, or you know, websites, but where, what's the best way for people to reach out and say thank you for coming on the show? Yeah, you know, um, just one of two places. The best place is just email me, danny at dannygriffin.com. Uh, I really do pay attention to email. And if I miss you, send it again. Yeah. That's what happened with Toby and yeah. I, right? Danny at dannygriffin.com. Don't be afraid to blow me up because um, if you're real, I'm in. I'll have a conversation, right? If you're trying to pitch me something, ah, you know, I, I, I don't kiss on the first date, right? Uh, <laughs> well, let's build a relationship. Let's have, yeah. let's have a conversation and uh, let's have some fun and let's see how we can help each other. So Danny at dannygriffin.com and uh, let's just start there. How about that? Yeah, that's great. And so what about Twitter? Are you on Twitter? Because we have a really, really... I am. I am. Yeah, at Danny Boy Griffin. Um, I'm clearly on Facebook too. Uh, you can find me the same way there. So Facebook, Twitter, I'm very active on Facebook um, and uh, getting more active on Twitter. And uh, if you send your audience after me on Twitter, that'll be a good reason for me to pay a lot more attention. Oh, I guarantee you, man. I guarantee you, you, you are going to have a bunch of new followers once it's there. So, hey, Danny, thanks again for coming on the show. And, and really, man, I wish you continued success. And uh, I know it's all going to come true. Yeah, well, I'm humbled to be a part of your great work. And, uh, you know, you mentioned something about teachers. Always be learning. ABL, man, always be learning. I don't care whether you think you have more experience. There's a lot that I know uh, about the coaching world, and there's a lot that I haven't even started. And thanks to guys like you leading the way, I get to copy you, man. So I learn from you every day. So I appreciate you more than, more than you even knew. Oh, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. See you, Danny. Let's go!